Well, thank you, and hello to everyone at this donor appreciation event. I've been looking forward to meeting and speaking with you today because we have something in common through our interest in the hospital, both, both as it exists now and as it will in the exciting future as our new home is being built. See, the thing is I enjoy the work that I do at the hospital, and I'm quite good at it, actually. And you, as a generous supporter of the hospital, you help to ensure that the work can be done. So I hope you've been enjoying yourselves here. Thank you very much. And I hope you find this to be helpful. It's easy for me to understand why you've been supporting our hospital, because I'm sure you know that a lot of good things are happening. We have many outstanding clinical programs, some of which you may have actually been targeting with your support. To name just a few, there is the Bariatric Center of Excellence, which was the first identified in the province. We've got the chemotherapy clinic where there are constantly ongoing clinical trials. Try to find better medications and drugs for cancer patients. Ours was the first hospital in Toronto to offer laparoscopic surgery. Surgeons still come to our hospital to learn the techniques. The dialysis program is outstanding, and the leader of the home dialysis program is an internationally acclaimed innovator. Certainly our hospital can rightly stand proud in the quality and the depth and the excellence of its clinical programs. You will also know that we have the good fortune to be a part of and sensitive to a rich cultural mosaic. The healthcare needs of our community reflect the diverse backgrounds of our patients, and it's a very stimulating environment in which to work. Providing health care to these various populations remains a constant intellectual challenge and a very rewarding and a textured learning experience for clinicians. So you might be asking just about now, if we're providing good care as is, why do we need a new hospital? Well, the answer, of course, is that things keep changing. For example, since I graduated in 1975, a number of new diseases have developed which didn't previously exist. And these need to be treated in new ways. And at the same time, there have been changes and improvements in the way previously existing conditions can now be treated. Hospitals which were designed 50 years ago have had to be patched and jury rigged just to try to accommodate. But this has its limits long since surpassed. Let me give you a few examples of how some surgical treatments have changed. When I did my general surgery training in the 1970s, Cholecystectomy required an extensive incision under the rib cage and at least a week of post-operative hospital stay. It's now done through tiny laparoscopic incisions and patients can go home the same day. Similarly, some heart conditions which used to require open heart surgery and prolonged intensive care can now be treated with a small tube inserted up through a blood vessel in the leg. These are again done as an outpatient procedure with excellent results. And there are many more innovations in care for which older hospitals were simply not designed. Now we should also note here that these innovations don't just come about by themselves. The journey to improve medical knowledge is not a well-lit stairway. It can be a struggle for which existing systems and funding formulae don't always provide. And this is another part of the good that comes from people such as yourself. Hospital supporters can provide opportunities for advancements that would otherwise not exist. I'll tell you something about myself now. In one capacity or another, I've been hanging around hospitals for over 40 years. I've worked in many hospitals here in Toronto as a doctor and a surgeon. I've operated at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, at the Sick Children's Hospital in Paris. I've uh, worked at the University Hospital in Mexico City. And I've had tours of, organized tours of many other hospitals across the country and around the world. So I feel pretty comfortable in saying that I know a thing or two about hospitals. So what about our new hospital? The new hospital that's being built right now. Because I've had some involvement with the design process, I sometimes get asked, is it going to be any good? Well, the answer is not only will our new hospital be good, it is in fact going to be awesome. But I'm also going to tell you, and I'm saying this purposely to get your attention now, when our new hospital opens in four years, it will not be up to date. That's right. When our new hospital opens in 2015, it will not just be up to date. It will, in fact, be much better than that. Our new hospital is going to be ahead of its time. 
it's going to be futuristic. And with the design development process presently underway, we are going to ensure that we can accommodate best practices on opening day and maintain the flexibility to adapt well into the future. It will be a hospital with which we will all feel immensely proud to be associated. The digital component is something that I especially anticipated. When I opened my practice in 1981, the only communication devices available were the telephone and the electric typewriter. A few years later, we got this amazing new thing called a fax machine, but desktop computers didn't exist until the late 1980s. I and my two partners at the time were early adopters. We had computers hardwired together between our offices so we could share documents, but the usefulness was very limited. Your cell phone today is far more robust than our entire system was then. In our new hospital, not only will modern digital technology make information exchange faster and more efficient, it will also be more reliable with fewer transcription errors. It will allow hospital staff to spend more time at the bedside because the small portable devices that everyone will carry instantly records the clinical data. And they won't have to spend a lot of time going back and forth, sitting at a central nursing station, tediously re-recording the same information. Patients will have more interaction with their care providers and have better treatment as a result. The digital component is going to radically change the way hospitals of the future will function. And since we will have the first fully digital hospital in North America, we expect a lot of interest from others who will want to come and see and learn how it's done. So the future is truly exciting. 